Good morning to one and all. Uh, today we will see something about the uh, various techniques involved in the molecular biology. And one of the most important uh, techniques involved in the molecular biology is uh, uh, DNA recombinant uh, technology. Now the DNA recombinant technology uh, means uh, the DNA from uh, different species is uh, recombined uh, to produce uh, different forms of uh, other genes. Now uh, DNA recombination uh, actually takes place naturally during the cell division, during the mito mitosis, when the uh, homologous uh, chromosomes, uh, a pair of them uh, come to uh, be nearby and uh, there is an exchange of uh, uh, genetic material between these uh, chromosomes. So this is uh, also an example of uh, genetic, uh, I mean DNA recombinant uh, technology. Uh, now uh, in the lab, uh, the uh, meaning is slightly different. That means the uh, genes from uh, different uh, species are recombined. Uh, to be uh, precise, the human genes uh, can be uh, recombined uh, with the bacterial genes so that the human proteins can be uh, synthesized. Now, uh, this has got uh, several applications because um, the uh, various vaccines can be produced because of this uh, technique and uh, uh, we can also get uh, specific genes uh, produced uh, in large quantities and also the different uh, proteins also could be synthesized for example the hormones like uh, growth hormone or insulin also can be synthesized and also this is helpful in the uh, bio uh, in the medical legal uh, cases to uh, pinpoint the culprit uh, so there are several applications of uh, dna recombinant uh, technology now there are some uh, uh, you know uh, instruments or rather um, uh, requirements uh, for the uh, uh, tools, not uh, instruments, uh, tools required uh, for this uh, technique. One is that uh, there should be a carrier molecule uh, which is known as a plasmid uh, or a cosmid or a uh, bacteriophage. Now, a small, if the DNA to be uh, multiplied is a smaller one, then a plasmid uh, would be sufficient. If the uh, DNA to be uh, polymerized uh, is uh, slightly bigger in size then uh, we will be needing a uh, cosmic and if the, if the DNA to be replicated uh, is uh, much much uh, longer then uh, the bacteriophage will serve as a uh, vector. Now these are also known as uh, vectors that is um, plasmid, cosmid and bacteriophage. They simply serve as uh, carrier uh, molecule uh, for the uh, for the delivery of uh, new uh, DNA uh, strands. Now, uh, we also require a E. coli uh, uh, culture also. Now, uh, the first process uh, is to, uh, you know, uh, isolate the desired gene. Now, the desired gene can be isolated uh, from the tissue where the gene is present or gene is expressed. Uh, but the, uh, to locate the DNA fragment, uh, coding for the gene is a uh, little difficult. Uh, for example, if you want to uh, isolate the insulin gene, then insulin gene will represent uh, only a very very small portion of the whole uh, DNA. It may be only 0.001% uh, or so. So uh, to search for such small fragments, is very difficult and uh, uh, many times it is compared to uh, searching the uh, small pin in a hashtag. So maybe it is next to impossible. So uh, what is the easier way out? Now the easier way out is to look for the um, messenger RNA molecule. Now uh, beta cells of the islets of Langerhans or pancreas uh, is specialized to produce the uh, insulin uh, hormone whereas the alpha cells are uh, specifically producing the glucagon. So if, you, if we want to isolate the insulin gene, 
the best way is to look into the uh, beta cells and um, extract the messenger RNA of uh, insulin molecule. Now, um, uh, for this, the all the RNAs of the uh, all the RNAs of the insulin uh, are extracted, and then um, it is um, uh, you know uh, it is passed through a column uh, which contains uh, uh, oligo uh, oligo um, T nucleotides. Uh, oligo U, or oligo sorry, not uh, T, oligo U nucleotides. If we uh, pass through the uh, mixture of RNA through a column uh, containing oligo uh, U nucleotides, then uh, as the mRNAs are having a, a poly a tail, uh, the uh, in in the column all the messenger RNAs will be retained, and uh, the the remaining of the RNAs will be uh, um, you know, passing through. So the uh, mRNAs have also been um, uh, retained in the column. Later on, these mRNAs can be uh, uh, eluted, and then this is the mRNA. From this, the insulin uh, mRNA also can be uh, isolated, and uh, now this is the mRNA from which uh, we know we can uh, synthesize a single stranded uh, DNA molecule. Uh, with the help of uh, reverse uh, transcriptase. Now, uh, reverse transcriptase or RNA dependent uh, DNA polymerase. Uh, now, uh, the messenger RNA can be uh, transcribed uh, into a, a single strand of uh, DNA molecule. Uh, now, from the single strand of DNA molecule, we can get a double uh, stranded DNA molecule also. So, so now we have prepared the uh, DNA uh, molecule which uh, codes for the insulin uh, protein or insulin mRNA and then later on insulin uh, protein. Now uh, this uh, is uh, uh, processed with the help of uh, restriction endonucleases uh, and uh, the, the same restriction endonuclease is used to uh, process or cleave a um, uh, circular DNA molecule that is the plasmid and uh, so, uh, there is base uh, complementarity uh, between the ends of the insulin uh, DNA and the plasmid DNA and so there can be combination and um, uh, with like um, A to T and uh, G to C. So, in this manner we can prepare a, uh, a recombinant uh, plasmid which contains the insulin uh, gene. Uh, now this process is not a very uh, very efficient process and only about 5% of the plasmids could be uh, recombined. Now uh, this is later on uh, incubated in a bacterial uh, colony and then uh, some of these uh, uh, plasmids uh, without the uh, recombinant uh, DNA uh, and also some of the plasmids with the recombinant DNA will be uh, incorporated into the uh, E. coli bacterium and this uh, uh, E. coli bacterium can be grown uh, in a proper medium and uh, we can extract the uh, colonies uh, which has got the insulin uh, DNA. Now this is uh, done uh, by with the help of antibiotic resistance. Now if we take a, a colony of wild uh, E. coli bacteria and then uh, grow it in the uh, natural media, then uh, we can see uh, that all of them uh, grow. But if we add, um, uh, uh, for example, uh, tetracycline and ampicillin into the mixture, into the uh, culture, then we can see that only uh, those, uh, only those uh, bacteria uh, uh, which uh, has got a recombinant uh, uh, plasmid, recombinant uh, plasmid, uh, uh, and also uh, a recombinant plasmid uh, with uh, uh, the uh, reco with the gene, human gene, uh, and also uh, the uh, plasmids um, will be able to grow. Now, 
Uh, that means about uh, out of about 100 colonies, only for about 4 to 5 uh, bacterial colony will be able to uh, thrive in a medium of um, tetracycline and uh, ampicillin. Now, uh, if they are uh, 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 if, if they are um, you know further grown in another replica plate then we can see that um, uh, one colony which was present in the previous plate is not growing. Now, uh, actually this will represent the uh, bacterial, um, uh, bacterial colony which is having the uh, recombinant uh, uh, DNA uh, plasmid and this carries the human insulin gene. Uh, that means uh, the uh, the, the bacterial colony from the previous uh, culture plate uh, representing the dead colony in the uh, uh, second uh, replica plate will give us the necessary bacteria which can uh, which contain the uh, DNA human DNA that is the human insulin gene. Now the, this can be uh, used for further experiments. So this is known as the DNA recombinant uh, technology. Now another uh, technique uh, which helps us to get uh, uh, many uh, molecules of DNA from a single strand, single molecule of DNA is known as the polymerase chain reaction. Now uh, for this we have to have the uh, desired uh, uh, DNA molecule uh, and then uh, you know they are um, uh, heated uh, up to about uh, 90 degrees so that uh, there is uh, separation of the two strands and then these two strands uh, should have a primer uh, sequence also both of them uh, and uh, this is uh, incubated with the help of uh, in, in presence of uh, uh, tart polymerase that is uh, the DNA polymerase extracted from uh, thermus uh, aquaticus uh, which these are thermus aquaticus are bacteria which can uh, withstand uh, higher uh, temperatures. So uh, in this manner, uh, the uh, tart polymerase polymerizes this um, uh, already existing uh, DNA strand into multiple copies and within a few hours we are able to get uh, several uh, thousands of uh, copies. Now this is known as polymerase chain reaction and uh, uh, we also have uh, reverse uh, uh, PCR uh, in which a messenger RNA could be used and then uh, this messenger RNA uh, could be converted to the DNA uh, and then the PCR can be done. Then another technique is also known as the real-time uh, PCR. So this is another uh, very important uh, technique followed in the molecular uh, biology. Uh, now a uh, third technique which is of importance uh, are the uh, blot techniques. Now there are three types of blot, blot techniques known as sudden blot northern blot and uh, western blot. Now in southern blot, the, uh, the target uh, DNA is, uh, uh, is uh, identified in the uh, northern blot, it is the uh, messenger RNA that is identified and in the uh, western blot, it is the proteins uh, that is identified. This also can be used for various purposes. For example, to identify the, the virus or the bacteria present in the uh, host cell uh, to find out what type of infection has taken place and uh, this also can be used for finding out the uh, culprit in medical legal uh, cases. Uh, so the technique uh, southern plot uh, is done by extracting the DNA uh, from the cells and then uh, treating with uh, treating it with the restriction endonucleases so that we get a large number of fragments of the DNA and then uh, it is uh, uh, denatured so that the single stranded DNA molecules are uh, produced and then uh, the, it is uh, electropho electrophoresis is done in an agarose gel. Now the, there are so many fragments and so they uh, depending upon the length of the DNA fragments they migrate to different levels and uh, so many uh, bands uh,
will be separated. Now, uh, out of this, uh, one or two uh, DNA fragments may be carrying the target DNA. <clears throat> now, this uh, can be identified uh, by, uh, you know, putting this, uh, uh, this uh, electrophoretogram onto a, a cellulose acetate uh, membrane and then um, pouring into the uh, cellular acetate membrane the uh, radioactive uh, labeled uh, probes. Now probes can be prepared for uh, many types of uh, DNAs for example in the diagnosis of uh, phenylketonuria or uh, cystic fibrosis or Huntington uh, chorea or uh, hemophilia. Uh, so or HMG coa reductase um, uh, rather um, uh, HMG coa reductase uh, enzyme uh, absence or you know something like that or the uh, LDL receptors uh, absence so uh, so different uh, probes are available uh, actually probes are single standard uh, DNA molecules which is uh, complementary to a target uh, DNA sequence so by using it if, uh, if the sample contains the desired DNA uh, it is possible to identify the uh, the um, target DNA and then uh, diagnose the disease. Uh, also, uh, it can be used uh, to pinpoint the culprit in medical legal uh, cases if we can get the DNA from the uh, crime scene. Uh, so, this is the southern block. In uh, the northern block, the, it is not the DNA that is uh, identified, it is the uh, complementary uh, messenger RNA that is uh, identified. So here the probe can be either a complementary RNA or a complementary uh, DNA. Now the, in the western uh, pl blot, the proteins are identified and hence here we need the antibodies uh, to uh, detect these uh, proteins. So uh, all these uh, techniques known as uh, blot techniques are uh, highly useful uh, in molecular uh, biology. Now. <coughs> Uh, so some other aspects uh, about this um, uh, molecular biology is that there are uh, restriction endonucleases. Now, restriction endonucleases uh, identified speci identify specific sequences uh, of about uh, four nucleotides, uh, which are known as uh, palindrome uh, sequences, and uh, these uh, actually cleave the uh, DNA strand. Uh, in these uh, palindrome sequences either to produce blunt ends or the sticky ends. Uh, now uh, restriction fragment length uh, polymorphism, uh, RFLP pattern of uh, various uh, genes or, the, or abnormal genes uh, can be detected by doing this uh, RFLP uh, analysis. Now uh, these are some of the very important uh, uh, techniques. Now another important point is that uh, you know a, a combination of uh, genes occur uh, to catalyze the uh, catalyze or rather to produce uh, the enzymes of a, a particular metabolic uh, pathway. Now one of them is known as the LAC operon which is seen in the Escherichia coli bacteria. Now here the uh, Escherichia coli uh, they normally utilize the uh, glucose as the energy source, uh, but if the glucose is not available, then the growth uh, does not take place for some time. And then if lactose is added, uh, the bacteria starts uh, using the lactose. Now, uh, uh, now this is due to the uh, uh, derepression uh, of the genes required to produce the uh, uh, lactose metabolizing uh, enzymes. Uh, one is uh, beta galactosidase, another one is uh, permease, and the third one is uh, transacetylase. Now, all these three enzymes are uh, coded by three different genes, and uh, these uh, genes normally in the E. coli uh, bacteria remain in a uh, uh, remain in a silent uh, state, so that uh, these uh, enzymes are not um, uh, you know synthesized but as and when the glucose becomes uh, absent then these enzymes uh, will be derepressed 
and then uh, we can get the uh, enzymes uh, synthesized and uh, these, uh, uh, the bacteria will use these enzymes uh, to metabolize the uh, lactose and they can uh, grow. So uh, this is uh, some of the other aspect. Now, uh, lac, this is known as a lac operon and such operons are also present in the uh, mammalian uh, cells.